Hi, Ben. Can you tell me a little bit where you grew up at? Grew up in East Palazzo, California, Illinois. It's the same place my cousin Barry died. When did you die? Uh, 7, 18, 11. What happened? He got murdered. I was in prison, though. How was it growing up where you grew up at? Niggas, shit. You gotta get some money. You gotta survive. How would you describe East Palo Alto? Shit is different now, but shit. It's home, shit. I love this shit. I can go anywhere in the world and it still ain't gonna feel the same. When you were when you were younger, what album or rapper did you grow up listening to? Uh, Jay Z. Jay Z. <laughs> you were in New York for for a while, right? Yeah. Um. What did you admire about that album or rapper? I mean. It was mainly his lyricism. It was the way he was putting the hustle and shit into the into the words, how he was using his words, his word playing his lyricism. The way he was putting the streets into this shit. He was hustling in his music shit. <laughs> For real. Can you tell me a little bit about when you started rapping? Uh I started rapping when I was uh fourteen. That was twelve years ago. I'm twenty six now. When you were 14? Yeah, I got my first studio equipment when I was 15. I started recording my own shit. <laughs> you didn't take any breaks in between? Nah, no, hell no. All gas? Yeah. What was it like rapping like when you first started up? Shit, it was me and all my cousins at first. It was like, a, it was a group thing. Then I just started out rapping to everybody. <laughs> was it like a, was it a serious thing or was it just like, just a, Make song. I was just having it's... fun at first. I was having fun at first. I fell in love with the shit. I was just doing it the past time. We was bored, shit. I was always banging on tables and shit, though. <laughs> Is that how you came up with your rapping? Huh? <laughs> how, did you, how did you come up with your rapping? From the streets. From the streets. Not banging on tables. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the streets give it to you? Yeah. And it just stuck with you ever since? Yeah. Huh? <clears throat> and uh, what made you choose rap? I always loved music. I don't know. It was always in my blood, like in my DNA. My grandpa, he uh, he played the blues, the blues with uh, BB King. So I, I guess it was in my DNA. I was always banging on tables and shit since I was young. I was always trying to make sound, some type of music somewhere. Just like any of your family members or mom or dad, like, did they know you were going to be a rapper or did they have a feeling since you liked to play a lot of music when you were a kid? I mean, my grandma always talked about how I used to bang on the tables and shit. And then my dad, when I was 15, he, he, he went half and with me on my first studio equipment. He paid 300, I paid 300. Got a little first Pro Tool set and shit and I started working like that. And then what made what message are you trying to bring with your music? Uh, trying to bring the truth in the music. It's real shit. It's like the truth from the streets. Like what we going through, our pain, the shit we going through out here. You condone any of the any of the violence? I mean, I don't condone the shit, but I know it's out here. It's out here. It's inevitable. It ain't, it ain't really no way around it. Parole got me stuck in this motherfucker and I can't go nowhere. So, how can I get away from it? If they put you back in the same place, how can you get away from this shit? What do you love most about making music? Sounds. <laughs> Gotta be sounds. This shit fuck with my head. <laughs> Gotta be the sound. Is there something that you look for when you make music? There's the right sound. I can hear the shit in my head. It's like something that is set off in my head and I know the shit right. I can make five songs and dump four in the trash can. <laughs> and keep that one. 
So you'd be like a perfectionist? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I ain't about to put out no bullshit. I ain't even gonna let nobody hear no bullshit. Fuck that. Is there uh, anybody that helps you with your journey as an artist? Or motivates you as an artist? My niggas? Hell yeah. When I see my niggas bumping my shit, see bitches bumping my shit, fans, anybody. As long as they you feel me, they support me. A whole bunch of people tell me, pull me over every day and tell me, you can keep rapping, man. Let me get a CD. A whole bunch of shit. That's your all motivation. All that shit motivation. It'll make me want to go back to the studio and make another song. How does it make you feel when you when you hear people playing your music? Make me feel good, shit. <laughs> now, what do you like most about being a rapper or or making music? Expressing myself. Expressing my pain in my music, the shit I'm going through. I ain't really the type of person to talk to somebody, so I'd rather just talk to the music. I let my, I let the shit that I'm going through out on the mic, basically. And how do you separate yourself from other rappers uh, in, in the Bay Area? It doesn't have to be East Palo Alto. Out of all the rappers you heard, what do you think separates yourself? I got my own sound. I ain't trying to be something I'm not. A lot of these motherfuckers following trends and shit. They all following each other and trying to make the same type of music. I make my music, make my own shit. I got my own sound. I ain't following nobody. And uh, what is what inspires you to make music? My daughter. Shit, to get out of this motherfucker, get out the hood. Get her out there. I don't want her to see the same shit I seen. So I gotta do something with this shit. I'm too raw to be sitting around this motherfucker. Ten years ago, by and I'm still sitting in the same spot. I'm gonna be thinking like, damn, <laughs> I was raw as fuck. Yeah, no time to waste. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> in that case, uh, where do you see yourself in the next five to ten years? MTV, BET, <laughs> for real. I might start my own show. Start my show. Where you gonna my call own it? Channel, Bangers World. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna watch that. And then right now, is there any projects you're currently working on? I'm just stacking up on a whole bunch of music. I ain't got no set projects in mind. I'm just stacking, piling shit up right now. Piling shit up. It's 2017, man. Gotta get this shit right. <laughs> what's, your, where, what's your uh, mindset right now for 2017? What do you want Just, to do differently? Uh, basically, uh, all of the paperwork behind the music, 2017. I want to get paid for this shit. I got to get some money behind this shit. I'm tired of just rapping. I'm being this motherfucker rapping every day. It ain't about just rapping no more. It's about feeding my family off this shit. That's 2017. Feed my family off the music. Then what's the process from when you realize that moment you want to make a new track to when you f you finish it and say, okay, it's done? I mean, like, process go through, depend on if if I made the beat or if somebody made the beat for me. Say and say you made the beat. Say I want to make my, my own beat and I want to rap on it. I want to snap on it. Say, the process basically is I got to, first I'm, I'm going to make the beat. I'm going to go crazy on the beat. Then I'm gonna study the beat and figure out how I'm gonna ride that motherfucker. Most motherfuckers just sit there and just start writing. I don't do that. I'm gonna come up with like a flow first before I even write to it. Then it, the shit gotta be right at the end. If it ain't right, that shit go in this trash can. <laughs> so you just keep listening to the to your instrumental until you get it down pack. Yeah, basically. And what's the most hardest obstacle you have to overcome in life? Uh, most hardest obstacle? I would have to say the police. They everywhere. <laughs> they keep fucking with me. They took me to jail like fucking like a week ago for it. For a warrant from January 2015. And I just got out of jail November 5th. 2016. How did I have a warrant from then? And I just got out in November. So like they just keep taking me to jail for stupid shit. That's the hardest challenge, getting away from their ass. Mm -hmm. <coughs>
And what about the most hardest obstacle you have to overcome in music? Uh, in music? What you mean by that? Like, um, like, is there anything that that gets you stuck when you're making something, when you're making a beat, when you're making lyrics? Like, is there anything that stops you majority of the time? My daughter. Yeah. My daughter. I'm always I'm overprotective. So if she in the house and I'm doing something, I'm always checking on her. So that's an obstacle. It's my daughter. But shit, she, she like music. So she'll come in this motherfucker and be right here with me when I'm making music. So she getting used to it now. But at first, that was an obstacle. So she, getting so her she, used to the music. So she knows your music, then? Yeah. She knows it. Hell yeah, she get to dance and everything. Oh, yeah. I recorded with her one time. I recorded with her one time my arm holding her. That shit was crazy. She didn't even make no noise. I was like, damn. <laughs> Are you ever gonna put her on a song with you? On a hook or something? She love music. She love playing my pianos. Mm. That shit crazy. That'd be a good collab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kalia Crooks. <laughs> <laughs> That's her name, Kalia? Yeah. If you had a chance to collab with any rapper, who would it be and why? Uh, Just to see if I can out rap his ass. That nigga got bars. Mm. He's from the East Coast, right? Yeah. From Brooklyn. And what rapper do you listen to the most, like, besides your music? Uh, old school shit. I listen to Biggie, Jay Z, fucking Nas. So you, you, mostly, you mostly listen to the East Coast? I mean, Excuse I listen me. to Tupac too, but mm -hmm. yeah. Besides Tupac, East Coast shit. Yeah. East Coast shit. Mm hmm And what do you hope to do with your music? Huh? So what do you hope to do with your music? Uh, let the world hear this shit. <laughs> Span this shit to the whole world. Everybody. To the moon if I can, shit. <laughs> it's a man on the moon. I want to be bumping my shit. For real. And if and when your music does take off and you do make it and you get out the hood, where would you like to live? I'm gonna go down south somewhere and buy a whole bunch of land. Like Spend LA or? Nah, you're nah. You're talking about like the, the like, south south. Like Georgia, oh, some yeah, shit yeah. like that. Uh -huh. I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of land where I ain't gotta deal with the police. <laughs> and I gotta have hella four wheelers and dirt bikes and fucking go cars. Mm -hmm. Like that Chief Keef style. Yeah, like okay. that shit. Big ass guns and shit. Man. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like ATVs. Um, where do you think you'd be if you didn't pick up the mic? In jail. That's the only thing stopping a nigga from being in jail. Is the music and my daughter shit. But besides a mic, I think I'd be in jail or dead. I remember niggas used to laugh at me and shit when I used to buy studio equipment and mics and shit. You spending your money on that shit? Some of them niggas dead. That shit crazy. That's, t that's an eye opener. Hell yeah. How old were you when like they were making funny about that? Like first starting this shit like sixteen, seventeen and shit. When we was all selling dope and shit. We was all on the block riding and shit. I used to go buy microphones and shit and headphones and speakers and shit. He used to be like, "What the fuck? You spending your money on that shit?" <laughs> Hell yeah, nigga, I'm investing in myself. The fuck you talking about? And then when you started making music and they heard it, what was their reaction? I mean, niggas started reacting. They seen me getting better and better. I kept getting better. That's all they really could say to the point where I am now. And how do you think that made you feel? Uh, it made me feel good, shit. Seeing myself get better at something made me feel real good, shit. Then do you have any, any advice for any upcoming rappers in EPA? Probably in EPA. Do you have any <laughs> advice since you're from here and it's just a real small town? Be yourself and stay in your lane. 
I'm trying to be somebody you not. That shit ain't gonna work. Niggas out here lying like a motherfucker. <laughs> do, you, do you think lying, lying on your music is like an easy way to get on the radio? Cause you know, like people rap about the stuff they don't do in real life, but still it gets played on the radio. Yeah, I mean it is commercial shit. It's all commercial shit. It ain't my way. I'm gonna rap about what I'm doing, what I did, what I'm trying to do. And if you can change anything about your life, your past life, what would it be? Had to be bumping into the law. <laughs> I would have left their ass alone. <laughs> uh, left them alone, all the hot shit I did. Cool off that shit. You think it would have been further with your music? Hell yeah, I did five years in prison. That shit slowed me down like a motherfucker. Did you keep writing? Why you Hell yeah, I kept writing. What did you do in there besides write? You do anything else? Write music and work out. Where'd you, where the heck you at? Uh, Susanville. Where's that? Uh, Susanville, California. It's up by Reno and shit, by Nevada. Like the border in Nevada. And then what'd you, what'd you do the first day you got out? First day? I came, I came home. I remember I came home that day. My dad picked me up. I went straight home. We went to the studio. Popped a bottle. We had a bottle of Remy. <laughs> I remember that day. Yeah. I took a dab. I was high as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I was loving it. Yeah. You set up a function and make your, make yeah. your records? Cause I had shit that I had wrote, and I had hella beats motherfuckers that sent me, so I just went in on the shit they sent me. I remember I made Rose, that was like the first day I came out. When I met that Rose, and I met that So Illa, like the first day. Did you realize anything when you were in jail? Like, is there anything that hit you? Like, that kind of changed your mentality? Realizing shit, motherfuckers that you doing all this shit for, in the streets and shit. They ain't gonna be for, there for you when you when you down. When nigga down, the motherfuckers ain't there for you. It's only your family. Some of your family ain't even there for you. <coughs> and being that you're from East Palo Alto, and there's a lot of rappers located in East Palo Alto, who have you collaborated with, or who do you wanna, who do you wanna collab with in UPA? Nobody. <laughs> if I don't if I don't fuck with you already, I'm not gonna fuck with you. I don't I ain't, I ain't doing no collabs, none of that shit. If I don't fuck with you in the streets, then I'm not fucking with you on my music. So, have you uh, who have you wrote your music with the most? Wrote music with? Uh, wrote collabed with? Els. 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 <laughs> yeah, Brian, huh? Yeah, that's my bro. That's my little brother. I have to say him the most. We sleep in this motherfucker. Wake up in this motherfucker. Go back to sleep, eat, shit, shower. Every day in this motherfucker. Sitting in the studio working. So after after this interview, what are your next steps after this? What do you plan to do next? <coughs> uh, I'm gonna go to South by Southwest in March. Gotta hit up South by Southwest. That shit coming soon. I'm trying to get some shows booked out there. I got a show January 29th in Frisco at uh, Monroe. That shit gonna be cracking. We <laughs> keep it lit everywhere though. Shit gonna be lit for sure. You bringing boys with you on stage, huh? Yeah, every time. I see that. <laughs> yeah, they gotta go with me on stage. I'm going crazy on stage. I see that. Set my motherfucking hype, man. Set my up. You <laughs> burn. My little cousin. So, um, is there anything else that you want to let everybody know? Fill them in on anything? Shit, I'm coming this year. It's 2017, man. I'm about to drop hella music. Get this shit right this year. Y'all better buy my shit. It's worth it, shit. 
tired of y'all giving all this giving y'all all this free fucking music. <laughs> it's time to pay for this shit. For real. You have any CDs coming out soon? I'm gonna drop a mixtape probably for my birthday next month on the twenty sixth. Got to. I know probably. I got to and that shit gonna go crazy for sure. What's it called? I ain't got no name for it yet. Got no name for it. I'm just, just working on all this material, trying to put this shit together the right way. There, is there anybody that you have to that you want to thank for for them being there or for them to help you? Zach. Yeah. Zach and Zach. They always help me with the music shit, man. It's my uh, like my best friend, my brother, and shit. <laughs> my manager. He always helping me. You need to get on this shit though. <laughs> you need to go a little bit harder, nigga. It's 2017. You get back from Hawaii. You so. gotta catch up. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta catch up when you get back from Hawaii, nigga. <laughs> How long has it been your manager? Uh, shit. Since I got out, so 2014. Three years now. 